still on it. How long does it take to get a new notice? There it is. Well, there's somebody else there now. <laughs> but yeah, I said hi to myself. <laughs> Good evening. This is actually our Sunday prayer talk. Should have said it Thursday. We really should have done it Sunday. <laughs> My fault. I had a worship hangover on Sunday. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> I'm just going to wait for some more people to jump on. It just hasn't had a long time. It just hasn't had time to get settled in there, right? And so now we're just down to me. We lost whoever. <laughs> okay. So I guess we'll start talking. Okay. Uh -huh. So um, I'm going to talk for like this much time because I, Tara's got a lot to say. Um, <laughs> so um, there was something I was going to say first and it's gone. I hope y'all are having a great week. I had an awesome weekend. I went to Faith Fest, so for those of you that don't live near us, that's a big, giant uh, Christian music concert thingy. It was like nine different bands that played, and it was awesome. It was hot. Tara went two years ago with us. It may be a while before Tara goes back. I'm not a concert person. <laughs> it was nice to fellowship with other people that <clears throat> see all kinds of things. So, um... I'm not going to talk, I'm, I'm still in that uh, timeline with the Deuteronomy and Numbers and Leviticus that keeps kind of going, jumping around in there. I think that it's almost over, like Moses is dying, so it's, it's over soon, right? <laughs> it's really bad. It's really, I'm still super stuck on the thank you Jesus that you came because I'm not having to live under that because, oh my, it's like all of a sudden... I'm always down there making cheese and listening, and I'm like, wow, thank you. I don't have to deal with that, because that's a lot, man. Oh, my word. They must have been, like, really smart to remember it all, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just a lot. Um, but yeah, Moses is getting ready to die, so we'll move on. <laughs> it's been awesome. Um, that I had um, something that kind of struck me this weekend, and then I had a couple of things come up after that have... Um, confirmed that in my spirit and um so i'm gonna say one or two things that you're probably gonna go as soon as i say but i need you to hear me out okay um we, we were is that the right place to start we were at a concert and um and I, we've talked before and my husband and i especially talked a lot lately about what we worship and how we worship and you know, being careful that, you know, we're not worshiping the pastors that we're hearing and that kind of stuff. And, and I think that's why I'm always trying to listen to so many different people. And, and I, I love the new people I've found to listen to lately. And I'm thankful for friends that send me new people to listen to. It was awesome. Um, but we were at the concert, and it's so awesome. When you go to a concert, you're hearing the songs that you know, and you get to sing, and it's fun. And, and you see the people for real in real life. And you made a movie star, and and I get that, and it's exciting, and it's and it's fun, and it's good for me, I think, and I'm sure for many others to see. You know, they're people. They're they're just you and me, and we all have different talents, and but it's it is fun, and I get that, and it's there's something really powerful when there's so many people together singing and worshiping, and and it's the spirit was definitely there. It was awesome and wonderful. Um, but when you're younger, 
and maybe not all of them have clued in yet to that true worship thing. And so the kids were really excited, especially for one band. They were crazy excited, and they went up front, and, and they were... They were giving an appearance that they were really worshiping, you know, like raising their hands and just really into it. But you could tell, like, in the people, different got, people would be introduced to come on stage and the kids were, Wah! you know, and they weren't worshiping God. It's, they were worshiping the people singing and the musicians and. And, you know, they just have to get older and learn. I'm not putting down my kids in any way. I'm glad they were there. I'm glad they had an awesome time and an experience. But at some point, we have to learn who we're worshiping, why we're worshiping, and how we're worshiping. And, um, and I love it for the kids because they're in those situations where there's lots of people doing stuff. And, and so they get the opportunities to raise their hands and to position themselves in those positions of worship in a place where they can kind of overcome the fear of doing those things, maybe. And so I think there's a good lesson thing in there, but um, we really have to be careful that we are worshiping God and not whatever pastor we're listening to, whatever music musician we're listening to. Um, you absolutely, you, I said it, so many times, if you are not reading the word on your own for yourself, the other stuff isn't going to get it. And, you know, for, for new believers coming in, you know, yeah, they've come into church and somebody says something and it hits home and in their heart and everything. And, and that's awesome because there's a purpose for all these things. There's a purpose for all the teachers and the pastors and the musicians that are in our lives and the friends that we come in contact with. But we then have to start feasting on his word, on the meat of his word. And that has to become what it's all about. Not, oh, I have to listen to this pastor, you know, because... Um, course you know there's good pastors we recognize that we listen to a lot of the same ones over and over again and you know when you know that somebody is living in truth and they're speaking truth that's so important it's just you know and you're you're going to continue but you, you gotta and you can have different pastors at different seasons in your life absolutely yeah i think that's good that's that's really good um but you have you you got to make sure that you're finding a connection between you and Jesus, and um, and as always, if that's something you're struggling with, please reach out to us. Um, we don't know it all, but I'm sure that we can try to help. Um, and so I just I wanted to share just some pieces, parts of some scriptures with you. Um, Psalm 103. Verse 1, and one portion of that, it says, All that is, is, that is within me, bless his name. It doesn't say bless his name. It says, All that is within me, bless his name. And so I think, you know, when those bands come up on the stage, and you're like, yeah! you know, and I think that 99% of us have been in a situation like that. You know, we've been to some concert. We've seen some, you know, I saw John Denver. I've seen many more people than that, but anyhow, <laughs> that one was the one I remember. We get excited over things, you know, when, when the sighting got delivered at the house, we're excited, you know, when things happen, we get excited. We should be beyond that every day for him. We should be walking out that back door, yes, God, you're here with me today, yeah! Cool, let's do this life together. Then you know, I mean, Dennis, said, you know, you're talking about going on his back porch every morning and clapping. Praise you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, yes, yes. And we we fail to do that. And but it should be that way every moment. You know, we live here in this awesome, amazing place, and and we get to just every day see cool things. And we're it's. I'm so glad that I have Tara because she'll. 
get inspired by the same things that I do. I think last winter we had ice that came up out of the ground and, and she saw me taking a picture and she had just taken a picture of the same thing. You know, there's so many awesome, amazing things that he created here to look at. And, and we're always going, man, isn't that cool? And I, yes, God, you did this. That's awesome. We should be getting into that so much. Just like my kids did for those bands this weekend. And, and then we're falling short of that because it says, all that is within me, bless his name. Um, First Chronicles 29, 11, it says, Yours is the greatness and the power and the glory and the splendor and the majesty. Greatness, power, glory, splendor, majesty. For everything in the heavens and on the earth belongs to you. And further in that same scripture, it says, You are exalted and we need to do that because he is all those things it's not just oh look cool what god god created that it's oh my look what he did he created this it is amazing and he is amazing we sh we should be living that way every second and i am just so struck that we're not living that way um Psalm 63 says that our lips will glorify him, that we will bless him, and that we will lift our hands. And we should be doing it all the time. Um, and Psalm 28, it says, my heart leaps for joy. And that's, that's what I saw in that this weekend. And that's where we should be. And that my heart just leaps for joy and gives it to him. And, and then we've all heard in, in Luke, um, near the end, <laughs> in Luke, <laughs> Somewhere in there. we're good, um, where it, it says that the very rocks will cry out to him. If we don't worship him, the rocks are going to worship him. And I'm sorry, I'm not letting some rock take my place. That just can't happen. I'm supposed to worship him, and I'm supposed to worship him with all that is within me from the bottoms of my feet to the top of my head, I need to worship him all the time. All the time. With everything. And, and I'm just really caught up in, I need to do that so much more. And I, th I really think, you know, we're, we're always saying, oh, look at that, he did this, you know. But it, it needs to be more. It just has to be more especially with everything that's happening now and and it's it's all in his word it's it's in there all this stuff is in there and it's happening and we know just like we said last week that he is who he says he is and he redeemed us we've got to worship him and we've got to come into one accord with him and, and live in that will and in that place that is lined up perfectly with him and we're not doing that if we're not worshiping him all the time <laughs> that's good that's that's really good which is kind of we were in the car yesterday taking our kids to um to their creative classes and um and i was sharing with melanie and and i did i ended up getting that excitement you know rolling inside because just thinking about everything that he's doing and and what's happening right now and and, and stuff and it's so crazy on where um, where I am in the word. And again, you know, I just picked up this, you know, he told me to read the Bible through the year and, and the version I'm doing, and it's all over the place. Like now I'm in Exodus. I went from like Genesis to Isaiah to now I'm in Exodus I'm in, <laughs> and um, Thessalonians. And I'm like, okay, Ooh, why, you're good why am I here? Yeah, I am like, what are we doing? It is God speaking. Is, is uh, That's all I can explain. It's like literally... It is just so in tune. So now I'm in Exodus and just it's going about the Israelites being brought out of um, out of Egypt and uh, their first encounter with God. And it's so crazy. So I'm being drawn to these um, to the, the feasts of the Lord. And 
that he gave us, you know, these feasts to honor him. And from the very beginning with the Israelites and the Jewish religion and traditions are carried through and they're, you know, they take them very seriously. And I'm like, well, why don't we? And so then I'm like, okay, well, we celebrate, you know, Passover and stuff during Easter, um, you know, because of what Christ did. Well, you know, digging in deep where God is just drawing me in to having this full understanding, again, it all points to him. Every single bit of the Bible is pointing to him. It's pointing to Christ, his, you know, creation to the, you know, when he comes back and what eternity looks like. This entire book is just this beautiful letter to us helping us all through our lives, generation after generation after generation, and understanding that we are in such a critical time right now and everything that is happening, I can't help but literally, like, I feel like the Bible is just coming alive as I'm reading this stuff because I'm seeing all the stuff that's happening in our nation and I'm seeing the, the revivals that are happening and I'm seeing... Um, the, the prophecies that are happening um, and, and, and God's power getting ready to move. And then I have understanding of um, these feasts and what they represent and what is happening in the heavenly realm. And God has these very specific, you know, anointed times, um, appointments through generation after generation of things that happen for his people. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, how are we not worshiping this, you know, yeah. and it's, you know, in worship of, of not even just, you know, oh, wow, look what you did, but just being in this, I mean, I've gotten into worship to where I just fall to my knees and bawl my eyes out because I am just, I am just overwhelmed for his love for me and what he's done for me and, and, and this life that he has given me and this opportunity to, to be a part of his kingdom. Like I just lose it because I just, and I'll go through certain times where I'll hear, um, I'll read something in the Bible or I'll hear somebody say something and they'll say some kind of word and it'll bring me to a thought of him. And I just start crying because I am just in, in such awe of who he oh, is. I'm not and, the only one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, it's, it's so beautiful. Um, and I don't know. I just, I just think that he is he is so trying really really hard to draw us to him, to him. But at the same time, we have Satan right there. Like I he knows yeah. he knows exactly um how we operate, how we think, what distracts us, what pulls us down, and he is right there. And it's so funny. Um somebody had said something about um I was watching the Victory Channel. And they were talking about, um, I guess somebody's kind of being attacked by people, a Christian is being attacked by people. And, uh, the gentleman said, well, if, uh, if, if they're nipping at your behind, that means you're in front of them. And I was like, oh, awesome. oh yeah, that's right. So, you know, so thinking about that, you know, if, if Satan's, if you're, you know, we're constantly up against conflict and, and things are happening and, and you're just, it feels like every day. It's like, all right, I'm, I'm on the track because he is bugging the mess out of me because he knows that I hold something and he wants to take that away from me and I'm not going to. And it just raises me up higher. It makes me dig in more and, um, and, and want to grasp this understanding more because I know I have authority and I know that I can push back against him and I can use it for my children. I can use it for my friends. I can use it for what's going on in this, in this world. And, you know, being able to have um, power behind my prayers, you know, getting that full understanding of, oh, sorry, Shane, <laughs> getting this full understanding of, of, of who we are as, as his chosen people and the, the, the power that is behind us because of Christ like, you know, the power wasn't, <clears throat> wasn't behind the Israelites before. They were dependent on their, their rituals and their routines and, and following these commandments and the laws. That way they understood that they could do nothing without God. 
And then Christ comes and, and just redeems and, and, and saves us from all of that, gives us this position that we were truly created to have. And now through him, we get to walk in this. I don't know, like I truly feel like a queen and, and I, you know, really express to my kids that they are, you know, princes and princesses of this kingdom. And we are all warriors for God's kingdom. And we are to be used by him for this world. And what our, what Jesus has asked us to do of carrying through that gospel, being that light into this dark world. And right now is such a critical time. And I think yes. that God is really rising yeah. up his people to, to truly get understanding of this. Like, like truly grasping what this means. Like there's got to be this burning sensation for you to want to know more or being pulled in a certain way. And, and whatever that is, you know, really allow God to use that. You know, if it is a song, if it is a certain pastor at this time, um, if it's, you know, a, a certain book that you're reading or whatever, I mean, I'm in like tons of different things, which I know you always are. And, but it's like, I, I literally see this path that he is taking me. He is literally like, I'm going to educate you. I want you to understand, you know, what this stuff really means and who I really am and why I do these things. And the end result, like all of this is leading to the end, you know, the days of the Lord. When, when, when Christ comes back to redeem us. All of this is shifting to that to that direction. And, you know, we all get, you know, because of these times and things are rough and we're, you know, everybody is like, oh my gosh, you know, we're there. I don't know if we are or not, but I'm not going to miss the opportunity, that's for sure. And I know that God um, has to allow things to happen sometimes to get our attention mm -hmm. because we just become like, oh, life is so great and wonderful and la, 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 la. And you just, he just drifts from your mind um, and I know in our lives personally, you know, every time that, you know, God would get us to a certain level. And if we lost that, that he was, that he is the forefront of everything that we do when he starts dropping down a couple of levels, we clearly see that because he will end up doing something, you know, either for us financially or health or something. And we're like, all right, Lord, you know, we, you know, we step down a couple. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, okay. You know, this is, this is where we need to be. Um, and so over time of learning those lessons, you immediately can be able to recognize, you know, where you stand. So I just, um, yeah, I just really hope that, that you guys, um, really get this understanding of worship and, and this connection with, with God, like to where you are allowing him to be your guide and your, your friend and your father mm -hmm. and everything that he is to us. Um, truly grasp on to this. It, it, we, it is really, really, really important. And um, part of what we are talking about doing, which I think we've kind of made the, the decision that we're going to do it, is um, no different. I, I went to Melanie once I realized, you know, these that there's these feasts and that they all point to Christ. And well, it, this is this is kind of one of those confirmation things that we because we actually uh, was. Near Easter that we did the we tried to pay attention to that girl we didn't yes. get to see it all that was talking about the all the feasts and I'm sure Tara will hit on that it revolves around the Jewish calendar and the calendar itself revolves around the Bible and and what is to come you know so you've got all the stuff that happened that happened <laughs> and then the more stuff happened and then more stuff happened and then what we have to come and. So we had already been kind of talking about, you know, looking into this stuff and, and even before that, just really, you know, about all the, the Jewish things, you know, because Jesus was a Jew and, and then we as Gentiles are a dot. Well, anyhow, I as a Gentile was adopted. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's important, I think, that we at the very least just understand why these feasts are happening and and to to show reverence, I guess, or an honor to them for what they mean, because it's all scripture, and it's and if and there's nothing in scripture that is not important to us. He put it there for a reason for us to understand things, and so I think that's super important. But I think that it, what I really was saying, 
when when God shows you something multiple times in a row, he's really confirming that you mm-hmm. need to focus on that. And so this is something that has been pointed out to us multiple times. So yeah, what she's gonna say is important. Yeah. And um and and it really has and and I and I don't know why I've I was I was not um we never celebrated any of the Jewish traditions or anything like that. And I don't know why. Um I guess it just, you know, generation after generation and you just be get less and less involved or something. I'm not really sure why. So I never truly had an understanding what any of this meant. Um, and so now that, and I don't know, maybe that's just God's hand. So that, that way my, my direction immediately points to Christ. Yeah. And now I can have the back end of it, of what, what, what it, what it, everything that is celebrated, that it's Christ. And that's what I have learned. And um, and, and having this understanding of uh, the yes the the Jewish calendar and um, how it lines up biblically from God's creation to you know we have the Sabbath and what does he say he says to celebrate this you know from for forever from generation to generation like this is something that you know and this was before anything happened this was literally. Mm-hmm. You know, seven days, well, after he, you know, even rests on the seventh day, immediately after, the first thing he says after he creates all this stuff is remember the Sabbath. Yeah. Like, before anything happened. So, um, before he created, um, Adam yeah. and Eve, yeah. you know, as far as the human form and Adam and Eve. Okay, so this is really, really important. So, why isn't it really, really important to us? Like, why isn't this something that is really expressed to this is something that we need to uphold and honor why you know and that and that, I think that's where I started digging into this stuff because I'm like well if you're telling us to do this then why aren't we like where have we come that we've lost you know we've lost this and then after you know getting into you know, I mean I've heard the story of you know exodus of God bringing the people out of Egypt yeah. A gazillion times, you know, now I have this whole other, you know, view of this and what every detail means and how every detail Christ fulfilled every single detail, like to the timing, the time, like, you know, the three o'clock in the nine, uh-huh. yeah, nine o'clock in the three o'clock. Like I am like. Oh my God. So now, you know, after I looked, you know, just dug into that and it's, and I dug into it through scripture, like, you know, I, I, from reading that whole Bible through the year, you know, it, you kind of just doing so much at one time, you know, in that time frame that once I got to a certain point, I'm like, oh my gosh, wait a minute. I like literally just read this and <laughs> this is exactly what this says. Yeah, and it keeps kind of going. Yeah. Back. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, why have I never seen this before? Again, God's time. God's time. Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> and um, so understanding that all of the first feasts that we celebrate, or spring feasts that we celebrate in um, with Passover and um, Unleavened Bread, mm-hmm. the Festival of Unleavened Bread, and... Which was insane. Yes. That's, some, that's yeah. so much stuff to it, that. it really is. And, and in the <laughs> spring, we will go through all of this in detail. Um, because we're just not at that time, but, um, yeah, the Feast of Trumpets to the Day of the, oh wait, no, that's where we're at now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so just this, the the spring, you know, feast and stuff. And then, so that is all Christ's first coming when he came and resurrected and, you know, and, and, and saved us to the, his, the fall feast are of his second coming and these things that are honored and why they're honored. And I found a really, really great book. Um, and it is The Feast of the Lord. And it's by Kevin Howard and Marvin Rosenthal. Rosenthal. This book is so awesome. And I literally was just like, yeah, I need to know more about this like in detail. And I found this book and this is it. So it was just God leading me because they, um, they really break down the history. Like this is what God has asked. This is what it says biblically. This is what has changed over generations on different events happening. And they said, well, why don't we add this and we'll do this or whatever. And then how it all points to Christ in the end. 
So, or when to point to Christ and where it points to Christ in the end. So being able to get this huge, big picture of truly what these feasts mean is beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's so beautiful. It is, it is like this amazing, like love letter, I yeah. think. Or so, I don't know. It is just, it is just beautiful. And, and what these certain things mean. So we are actually going to, um, celebrate these feasts. And the first one is mm -hmm. Rosh Hahana. <laughs> Rosh Hahana. And that starts on September 6th. Okay. And on that, we'll give more detail, um, like, um, probably in a couple, you know, like in a day or so, once I kind of wrap all this up, but we are actually going to, um, take this time to actually celebrate this based off of what I've been learning. And we will show you this. <laughs> yeah. That's what she's getting at. We're going to, we're going to do this with you. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to do this. Bring um, in some other people. Yeah. Too. We're going to do this live and we're going to bring some other people, um, in because we know that they have some, um, resources that, that we need to, to make this happen. And so this is going to be kind of a, a collaborated thing. Hopefully it'll work out like we want it to. Um, and so we are going to celebrate this for 10 days leading up to Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur okay. And that is, um, 10 days after that, which is the September 15th or 14th, something like that. So, um, so we're going to give, you know, descriptions of what this means and how it really, really applies to where we are, where we are as Christians, not because of where the world is right now, but I'm like, this is something that we should be honoring and celebrating every single year. And we're not like Easter is a big thing and Passover is a big thing. And well, this is a big thing. Like this is yeah. him coming back again. And if we, we are obviously not, getting close to, yeah, it. you know, <laughs> and if in, we are not in line, hello, like, you know, and this is the one area that I want to read, um, to read to you guys and then, and then we'll be done because I want you to understand the importance of, of why the, why we should be celebrating these and we're not like, why, why should we, we should be evaluating where we are personally and we're not. Like this is this is something that is not expressed enough. Well, I think what's really good about it is that, and it's part of that thing with you discussing how you 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 didn't grow up doing these things and you learned about Christ first, and it's it's almost it's better because you're we can do it for the real reasons, and it's not just something traditional, you know. And I I grew up in a in a church that had very traditional things you had to do, and and I didn't know why. You know, I just did them. And now I know why. And the opportunities that I go back to that type of church, it really means something. Or like when you hear the words that hymns, they really mean something now when we just kind of did it before. We just said it before. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important that, you know, now it can be done with a real meaning behind it, not just something that's you're doing it because it's tradition. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, in, in a lot of areas in the Bible, it also says that, and God says, you know, why you're doing this stuff is so that way when your children, because the whole purpose of these feasts for him was for us teaching the next generation so that they did not forget. Yeah. Like we talked about the forgot. rocks before. Remember when yeah. they were supposed to set up all yes. the rocks and when they walked by, they'd say, what are they here for? And you yes. tell the history. Exactly. Um, and so, and that's how this is, you know, that we're supposed to be doing these. So that way the kids say, why are we, why are we doing, doing this? Or why are we eating this bread like this or whatever? And then we could say, well, this points to, you know, and because this is what he did for us, you know, I'm like, this stuff is important, like really, really important. So I'm just going to read this one part. Um, national repentance by Israel is a prerequisite to the Messiah's return. Israel's repentance is one of the chief purposes of the day of the Lord. Israel's king will not return to her until she is ready to receive him. The rabbis of old correct, correctly understood the prophets when they declared, were Israel to practice repentance for even one day, they would be redeemed. 
and the branch of David, the Messiah, would come. Yeah, they were taught that. Gather together. Yeah, get, exactly. Get that true repentance. Um, tragically, unrepented Israel, along with Gentiles, will suffer the fury of God's wrath before she is willing to say, Blessed is he, Jesus the Messiah, who comes in the name of the Lord. And this is in Psalms 118, 26. And I think Matthew, the abbreviations of the Bible, the word, the books are different in here. I think it's Matthew 23, 39. But the, the concept of repentance is far more basic to God's word than just its connection to prophecy. Repentance is required of all men. Repentance is the life and death principle in scripture. The soul who sins shall die, but if a wicked man turns from his sins, he surely will live. That's in Ezekiel 18, 20 through 21. Okay, this is a, Jewish word, a Hebrew word, and I have no idea what it says. Do you know what that Teshuva? Oh, is that, that isn't that the one that they've been talking about that um, South thinks of any of them? Oh, yeah, but it does. They don't actually extend the Usha thing, or the AH. All right, so known as, I think it's Teshuva, maybe? T E S H U V A H. Okay, look that up. Um, in Hebrew, repentance literally means to return that is to return to god it involves a reversal in spiritual direction and is accomplished in two actions on the one hand repentance requires that an individual turn away from sin by forsaking it the almighty beckons repent and turn from your transgressions so that iniquity will not be of your ruin Cast away from your from you all the transgressions which you have committed. Ezekiel 18, 30 through 31. On the other hand, repentance requires that an individual turn away or in turn toward God by putting complete trust in him as his redeemer, the Messiah. King David wrote, Kiss the Son, the Messiah, lest he be angry. And you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled by a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Psalm 2, 12. It is to the same king over all the earth that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall take an oath. Isaiah 45, 23. There is no other way to come to God. The day is coming in which the Messiah King will come. Jesus will return to Jerusalem. He will reign over all the earth. He will reign forever, even as the prophets foretold. Yes. But not all will enter his glorious kingdom. When the Redeemer comes to Zion, he will come to those who turned from transgression. Isaiah 59.20 and to those who put their trust in him, Psalm 2.12. Um, a rabbi, one of Israel's ancient rabbis, declared, Repent one day before your death. This astonished disciples, the, the, his this astonished disciples asked, Does then no one know what day he will die? The rabbi replied, Then all the more reason that he mm -hmm. repent today oh yeah <laughs> right especially with what's going Turn on to today right now you do not know when your time is yeah. the idea is of course that men do not know when they will die thus repentance is urgent the voice of scripture is so sh is in is in strong agreement today is the day of repentance we do not know the number of our days nor the days of his wrath. But we must seek him now while the gates of repentance remain yes. open as the prophet implored. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Call upon him <clears throat> while he is near. Isaiah 55, 6. 
Have you truly repented? Have you turned away from your sin and toward God, thereby passed from death into life? To those who do, he faithfully promises to cast all your sins into the depths of the sea and remember them no, no more. more. <laughs> okay, yes. And that was the ending part that talked about many pages of Rosh Hashanah. And so we will go into detail of what a lot of these scriptures and how they are directly pointing to that when Christ comes back, it says we do not know the hour. No, we don't know the hour, but we have a pretty good idea of the time because he's been, he's there through what? Obviously revelations, through Daniel, through Isaiah, through Ezekiel, mm -hmm. through John. Like we have been told, Christ even told his disciples of what to, the signs to look for. We know what signs to look for. We know the time period of in the year of when it will happen, which will be during these feasts, but we don't know what year, okay? We don't know when that exact moment comes, and neither does Christ, and he even said that. The only one that knows is God the Father. So why wait, right? And so this, this whole purpose of these feasts are so that people will evaluate where do you stand before Christ, going into the new year, which is the new, this, you know, the new biblical year. Um, where do you stand going into the new year? Repent of your sins before you enter into a new year because you do not know what this year holds. And then there's like a really crazy part to that, um, which I'll share, you know, in a well, couple of days. And the thing is, you know, to that, the detail that they gave to doing these things at that time was so intense. And that follows right along with, you know, what I discussed last week or week before with all the things that had to be done. And so their minds were constantly on God and, and that we've, we've lost that because we don't have to do those things. So I think understanding the importance of them is just so, and it's like you said, right now and everything that's happening in this world that obviously lines up with the wise in the Bible. Um, it's so important that we, we understand and that we focus on on him and on the reasonings why because we yes now repent now turn to him say that he is who he says he is now because you don't know that tomorrow is going to be here yeah we're, we're not promised tomorrow at all so mm -hmm. yeah it's just crazy mm -hmm. important yeah absolutely so i hope you guys enjoyed and i hope um that i hope that you are that there's some type of urgency in your heart you know or there's a thought that passes through and you're like you know what let me look into this or you know something I just say yeah. you know open the Bible you know I know that at times um, especially for new believers that it's very overwhelming you know what I when I started I started in the Old Testament I mean the New Testament, New Testament because the Old Testament was so confusing to me it scared me so I just started, and I didn't even start in the, you know, in the the very beginning of the four gospels. I started with Paul because I'm like, <laughs> I understood that I, I had heard um, about his story that he was, you know, one, he was Saul and that he was, you know, martyring Christians and, you know, and Christ met him at, on his way to Damascus. And I'm like, what? And there's so much hope in that because if, if he... And that was what, that's Candy. what drawn me because I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, who is this guy then? Because I, I was not, you know, raised in the church and, um, and I, I went to private schools, but it was, it, it was, you kind of were drilled on what you needed to learn kind of thing. So I never had a relationship with Christ. And so when I started that and that's, and I remember hearing that story and I'm like, who does that? And that's where I started was I started and I bought a book about Paul and I, and that's where I started. And I spent probably the first three years of my walk in, um, in book in Paul's books that he wrote to the churches. That's and where I so started. Much there. There's yeah, so much that's there. where I started. And I, I think that that part where, you know, it yeah. is so, as a new Christian, it's so overwhelming what's in there, but there's, there's just power in the word. And so the more you read, even when, you, you know, you feel like I'm just not getting this. There's power in that, and as it lines your will up with God's will, then he starts revealing more and more 
through the scriptures and and he may reveal something in you know the book of John today that you read 20 years ago and he revealed something totally different about and yeah. so it's just the more and you just keep going and you just keep going and more and more gets revealed and and more is important to you at the time that God needs it to be important yeah. to you um, well that's like you know me now being in the Old Testament and and I have full understanding of it now and, and, and the words just pop out at me and I'm drawn to certain areas and I know that it links to these other areas and and I was never into that before. Yeah, I've never I, enjoyed the Old Testament before and I am thoroughly enjoying it right now. Yeah. It's just absolutely yeah. So I, I think God's just drawing his people. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's raising up his kingdom. He's bringing his people um, all together for his kingdom because of what he's getting ready to do. And I really, really... I really do honestly believe he's getting ready to do some pretty miraculous things. I was telling Melanie, um, I had the, you know, the thought of, you know, you wouldn't, well, normally you wouldn't go and tell your enemy what we're doing, you know, in, you know, in wars or something like that. Right. And so I, you know, the same concept to me was, you know, God's not going to say, you know, through the, his, you know, his prophets and stuff of, oh, I'm going to do this, 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 and then this. And that's how I'm going to work it all out. Yeah, because then, then Satan's going to be like, oh, great. Thanks let for the heads there. up. And so let me, you know, deter this. So he's throwing all of this stuff because there is just, you know, one, you know, Satan be the author of confusion. Well, you know, God is in the midst of what Satan is doing, raising up the church, doing some pretty rem remarkable things. And I really do think he is just going to come through. My my vision has has been, and every time I get into into prayer, is that the floodwaters rising so much to where Satan and his enemies are pushed back, yeah. um, uh, you know, away from away from us and and what he's doing. Um, and then we well, rise and up. The point is that you know God's in control, mm -hmm. no matter how how dark the times seem, because they are. God knows what he's doing, and he's going to use it all for his good um, and to bring glory to him and to, to save us. So there's there's no doubt that uh, he's, he's got it under control. None of this surprised him in any yeah. way, shape, or form. Well, and, I, and, and to add to that, I remember uh, when I was reading um, to yesterday or today, so when God brought Moses um, to Mount Sinai, and he said, you know, bring the people to the mountain, but don't touch, don't make sure they don't touch the mountain. And so when, you know, God, the cloud, which is, you know, got to remember, it's like, it's not this like rainbow over this, you know, the mountain. Well, and it whatever. wasn't just bring the people. It was people. Yeah, it was like that hundred and it's of all thousand. these people yeah. from touching. Yeah, them. and don't touch the, you know, the mountain. And they brought them outside the camp. But there was like this cloud of, you know, he was coming down with lightning and thunder and dark and, you know, like a severe thunderstorm, like God was in this thunderstorm. And that when he did finally come down onto the mountain, the the ground shook and it terrified the people. And so I'm like, okay, it was like, here's like, you know, the presence of God. And it terrified the people so much to where they were like, you, you go talk to them and talk to them and you come to us because... We Which is don't, right here. <laughs> well, yeah, they, we don't want anything, you know. So, you know, thinking about that's how powerful and his and his his majesty, those words that you were saying, you know, of just who he is, you know. And so, yeah, it's gonna it's when when he does finally, you know, start to get some to get to work in some things, um, it's not gonna be like oh hallelujah, you know. It's gonna be some shaking, and uh, and those <laughs> who right. are drawn to him. He's got a gazillion promises in here of saying, you you know, you will not stub your foot on a stone and, right. you know, these things won't happen and you won't fall and you will have strength and you will have understanding. So, yeah. that's what I'm standing yeah. on. I'm ready. Absolutely. Um, so, let's just super quick, uh, let's pray for everything that is happening and just uh, safety for people all over the world, all over the United States right now, you know, wildfires and hurricanes and power outages and just everything here. And then, of course, in Afghanistan and Australia mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Really everywhere. In Canada, yeah, there's just, there's literally something everywhere. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, let's, really let's everywhere. just take a moment and... Thank him and ask for 
so thank you for dying for me. Yeah. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your word and that we can we can have faith in it and, and trust it because you are who you say you are and you have redeemed us and, and you've proven yourself time and time again. We don't uh, we don't have to look for that. We know that you are who you say you are. And uh, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your word and for pastors that can teach us more about it and for friends that surround us and that we can lift each other up. And Lord, we just ask tonight... Um, for your presence to be seen in all these things all over the world that are just happening, that are chaotic, that is not of you. Um, Lord, that you would just be miracle working in these situations so that in all this darkness, people will see you and turn to face you. Uh, even those that are meaning to do harm, Lord, that they would see your work in all of this and not be able to deny you. Lord, we just, um, we just ask that you would just be mighty, because we know you already are. And show up in mighty ways that cannot be denied. Um, we, just, we ask salvation for, for all these people, and we just can't imagine doing life without you. And I just want everyone to feel the things that I feel when I know you're here. And thank you, God, that you give us these things sent your son to die for us. We just ask your blessings over everyone listening tonight. Lord, that the words that we've said, that you're going to use them in each person's hearts and minds to do your will and to help line them up with your plan. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we will um, be seeing you soon to start talking about some of these feasts. Um, and I know many of you have heard us talk about uh, we were going to do... Um, revival in October that may kind of be on hold so just listen out for that um, but it is definitely something that's going to happen we just want to do it um, in God's timing and to the best of our ability to honor him yeah so but I, I do stay tuned because we're going to walk through these feasts and see what they mean mm -hmm. I think it's going to be fun yeah absolutely so thanks guys have a great rest of the week bye bye, bye.